Okay, today on our Learning to Earn class, we're in our diesel class. We are going to be looking at doing a compression test on a diesel engine. And so there's a couple of things we're going to talk about and things we need to get ready beforehand. So first I just want to talk about the testing equipment. So the equipment that we're going to be using is going to be a diesel testing kit. So our diesel testing kit, we just happen to be using an OTC testing kit that came through John Deere. And as you can see, we have a gauge. This looks just like what you'd find in an automotive program or an automotive test kit, but a diesel testing compression tester is much different. And what we're gonna find is our compression for a diesel is way higher. We need a test, a compression tester that's gonna go to at least 600 PSI. And today we're gonna be over 400. So you're gonna see that. A normal standard automotive pressure it will actually peg it'll damage it so it needs to be a special diesel compression tester a diesel compression tester looks very similar what's different is the, the how high a pressure it can handle and it'll have it usually comes with a kit and the kit has various adapters and the adapters are how we actually reach in and a car or automotive or a gas engine we're going to reach in through the spark plug well we don't have a spark plug in a diesel engine so we got to find an alternative so we do it one of two ways we either go in through the glow plug or we're going to go in through the injector this particular project we're going to demonstrate today is an indirect injection diesel engine and it has glow plugs so we're going to be utilizing the glow plugs and make this easier if not we would have to use one of these various adapters John Deere pencil style you'd reach in there and then we have various other brands so just gives you an idea they're different each machine is a little different and so you kind of need a kit that has various adapters and this is our testing kit now can you use that one for also for automotive so you don't have to although it may be a you device. do not have all the special adapters to go so you'd have to find some kind of an adapter to go to automotive so to try to use a diesel compression tester for automotive would work because it's a compression gauge it has a check valve but uh, it's not calibrated as fine so it would work but trying to get the adapters would be probably a little more challenging. These ones so, are a lot more expensive too, so if you're using it every day for lawnmowers and stuff, you might want something. To so this particular one, when we set it up to do this demonstration, we found that our needle would bounce up and down, so go up and go down, it was leaking down. So we actually physically took it apart and washed it. It was full of debris, trash, that was coming from the fact that when you do a, a compression test, carbon breaks free, and that carbon got up in here, and the gauge was not holding steady. So we just took it apart, we cleaned it, and fixed it. So it's even possible to repair it, and that's not uncommon for compression testers. So if we're gonna do a compression test, we've got our gauge, we've got our tool, we uh, first thing we want to do is we need to be able to turn the engine over so we removed some sheet metal here so we had access to it and we did most of it just for clarity for this demonstration we removed the glow plugs and if you haven't seen one before this is be what a glow plug would look like so we have just a simple piece that threads in so it's similar in style as a as a spark plug and it goes in the top. So right here on the top of the location are three holes where the glow plugs went in. This is our adapter. So we've already screwed the adapter in that we're going to be using. We don't want diesel fuel to be going into this engine while we're doing a compression test. And so to shut the fuel injectors off, we need to shut the fuel off. This particular machine has electric solenoid that turns the fuel on and off. So when I turn on the key, it clicks. The click would turn the fuel on, turn the key off. You hear the click go off. So all we did was simply unplug the solenoid. So when I turn on my key, the fuel doesn't come on. So now my fuel is off. That's all I had to do to disable the fuel system. So I've disabled the fuel system. I've opened up the other glow plugs. That way as I'm cranking it, I don't have that other compression slowing me down. So it would be like pulling all the spark plugs out to do a compression test on a gasoline engine. So you pull it off, remove resistance, let the engine crank freely. When we pulled off the covers, we pulled off our air cleaner and that removed any kind of restriction, dirty air filter situation. So now we have a wide open intake manifold that lets maximum amount of air in. So I'm allowing it to have maximum freedom to pull air in and I've taken the resistance off by removing the other glow plugs. So with our adapter, we're just going to simply clip this on. And so it clips on, quick connect and 
make sure that we're not going to get caught and we have our gauge up here so we are ready at this point to go ahead and crank so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold this steady for you and we'll zero in there and you'll hear other noises and that's the air coming out the other uh, other glow plug terminal so I'm going to crank until the needle quits turning so ready So there it quit moving and we're at 400 PSI. So you think, whew, that sucks a good engine, right? This diesel engine, when you go to the specifications in the technical manual, minimum compression pressure in this engine is 435. So 435, we are low in compression. That could be lots of stuff, was it? 426? 426. So let's go ahead and pull this one, move it forward, and we'll do the other ones real quick. So it's a pretty quick process once we get the glow plug out like this. So we're simply going to zip this one out, move it forward, do the same thing two more times. So while we're waiting for that, we'll give you a little history. This particular machine has an air filter that's mounted on the side of the engine, and it was modified. A person, a homeowner actually put it on there. And when they mounted it on, they didn't weld it right. And so they ended up with, and I'm going to release this here. So when they, mo when they modified it, the weld was not complete, and there was a pinhole the size of a pencil lead. And it sucked dirt into this engine and wiped out the engine. So this engine has been dirted out because of modification that was not quite efficient so so I'm again protected I'm not gonna stick myself I'm gonna go ahead and crank it until it quits moving ready so again we hit 400 so I'll release it this one we drove in, so you can see we're at 400 PSI, but it still runs. It just doesn't have very much power. So it's got a low power situation. Uh, middle of last summer, last spring when we had it, it wouldn't start. And so we had to do a lot of work. We finally got it to start. And once it started and kind of cleaned itself up, we were able to continue to use it the rest of the summer. But it's really difficult to start. So even though we're at 400, we're supposed to be at 420. Six, uh, it still does run. <clears throat> so, but it's going to get worse and worse as it goes. So, one more time. Uh, you ready? So, this one is at 300. So, you're like, well, why would one be 300 and the other two of them be at 400 and I want to point out something that's important so when you zero in on this engine this engine has an intake manifold the air comes in here and you got to think air is heavy when air is heavy or dirt is heavy dirt wants to travel in a straight line so when it comes to this tube and it's running the air is going to go in when number one cylinder opens on intake stroke air is going to go in when number two opens up the air has to turn 90 degrees before it can go into the next one well the dirt doesn't want to change directions the dirt's going to stick in a number one and then the air is going to turn direction and go over here so more dirt actually goes into the front cylinder than in the rear cylinders and so because of the way the intake manifold is set up it matches the fact that we have dirt ingestion it matches with our compression testing so we verify yes number one should be worse number two actually is, should be a little bit lower number three should be less and so i was a little bit surprised that these two were the same number i kind of anticipated number the middle one to be a little, little bit it should have gone high middle and low I, I was expecting it to be progressive but it didn't and that's okay and so but that's really all it's to it that is a compression test so it's just like doing it on a car it's just expect higher pressures 
when I'm cranking it, you're going to have more air coming out. So make sure you're wearing your safety glasses and you're not stuck in the fan or any place like that. So just make sure you got yourself covered. Definitely make sure that you uncover or unplug your fuel shutoff solenoid or whatever it takes to shut the fuel off. Otherwise, you're going to have fuel spraying out of those glow plug holes. Can you also use a remote start? To you can use a remote start. Uh, typically, if I wasn't trying to film, I would actually just sit in the seat. I'd be holding my gauge and I would be cranking. That way I'm out of the, the area here. So that would just make it simpler. So I don't really need a remote starter. So that is our diesel compression testing. So please join us again on our Learning to Earn channel.